and welcome to my second online assembly. Here I am again in my front garden. Perhaps you can see the school just in the background there. Uh, you might just be able to make out my vegetable patch over there. Last time I spoke about the apple trees that I planted and they're coming on well, forming their apples. And I'd like to show you my vegetables a bit closer up, but first I want to show you something else. Look at this wonderful rose, which was something I planted when I got here as well. It's a shame you can't smell it. It has this glorious scent. The bees love it. You can probably hear the birds in the background. We really are surrounded by nature at the moment, and we're so aware of that because the planes aren't making their usual sounds. So now I'd just like to show you my vegetable patch. So if you'd like to come with me, we're going to walk over to it now. So here we are with my vegetables. They need a bit of weeding, but I think you can make out the plants. You've got my beetroot here and some butternut squash waiting to be planted out in the background. Got my lettuces and my peas growing off the wire there. Courgettes, salad and broad beans down at the end. And here we've got my climbing beans climbing up these stakes. And along the fence more beans and peas. And if you come over here, I want to show you some other things that I'm quite pleased with. I've got, growing in pots, some tomatoes. And they're just beginning to form little green tomatoes. I'm really looking forward to them ripening and being able to eat them. And here's something that I've grown for the first time this year. These are aubergine plants and they'll grow up these stakes and hopefully we'll have nice big aubergines ready to eat. More tomatoes and here tomatoes growing in the ground of these stakes. And finally, more courgettes. They're doing really well. At the end of these flowers are little courgettes. And before long, I'll be able to eat those too. Before I arrived here, there was an enormous oak tree growing here. You can sort of see the remains of the roots in the ground. And I planted this bay tree here when I came but they had to cut the oak tree down because it was beginning to go rotten and was dangerous. So they planted another oak tree to replace the one that they cut down over here. And this oak tree, like the great big one that was there, came from a little acorn. such a tiny thing from which such a big thing can grow. This acorn reminds me of a vision that a nun called Julian of Norwich had 600 years ago. She had a series of visions about the love of God and she wrote them in a book called Revelations of Divine Love. In one of them she says she saw a small thing in the palm of her hand, the size of a hazelnut, a bit like this acorn here. And she said to herself, what is it? And she heard God say to her, it is everything that is made. And she thought it looked so fragile, and she marveled that it could stay in existence. And she heard God say to her, it exists because I made it, and because I love it, and because I keep it. And seeing the earth 
as something so small reminds me of how astronauts have described seeing the Earth from space. And at the moment there are five astronauts in space in the International Space Station. And I don't know if you've seen it go overhead recently. It's been very bright in the night sky as it's risen over there and passed right over Smallfield. There have been people in space since 1961. And some of those early astronauts have described their vision of the Earth. One of them, James Irwin, said the Earth reminded us of a Christmas tree ornament hanging in the blackness of space. And as we got further and further away, it diminished to the size of a marble, the most beautiful marble you can imagine. That beautiful, warm, living object looks so fragile, so delicate, that if you touched it with a finger, it would crumble and fall apart. Seeing this as to change a man, to make a man appreciate creation and the love of God. And another of those early astronauts, Jim Lovell, described how when he was in his spaceship, he was orbiting the moon and he went round the dark side, the far side of the moon. And as he came round, he saw not a sunrise, but an earth rise. He saw the earth rising above the horizon of the moon. And he said how he put his thumb up to the window and completely hid the earth. Just think, he said, over five billion people, everything I ever knew behind my thumb. He said, as I observed the Earth, I realized my home is a, a small planet in the solar system, a mere speck in our Milky Way. And I began to question my own existence. How do I fit in to what I see? And he said, in my mind, the answer was clear. God gave mankind a stage upon which to perform. How the play ends is up to us. And that's really made me think that quote, especially in this crisis that we've been living through at the moment. And because of this crisis, you haven't been able to go to school. And so, in some ways, your education has suffered. But I still think we can learn some very important things from what we're going through at the moment. You can learn them, I can learn them, and we can all learn them. I think one of those things is to realize how precious life is, how fragile life is, how our ecosystem can be so easily destroyed. And I said before in my previous assembly how just everything stopping for a bit has made us look differently at everything. And a really important part of your education, of my education at this time, would be to learn just how precious and how beautiful our planet and life is.